for the majority of websites, especially personal websites for developers, you really don't need to be using JavaScript files for your pages. Instead, you can use Markdown. Doing this will give you some amazing benefits, such as faster load time, and it's easier to develop and add content. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Markdown files in Next.js. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is create a new Next.js project, or if you already have one, you can use that. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is open up package.json, and you're gonna to wanna to copy and paste these three dependencies into your project. MDX.js loader, React, and Next MDX. And these three packages will allow us to quickly and easily add MDX or MD pages. Once you have that, go ahead and run yarn or npm to install those dependencies. Next, you're going to want to create a next.config.js file. And inside of here, we're going to want to add the following six lines. Now, these can be found on the Next.js website or their docs. And essentially, all this is doing is it's using this dependency here that we just installed and it's exporting it. Now let's get into the fun part. Go ahead and create a new file called about.mdx. That'll be inside the pages directory. Now we can go navigate to that file. And previously, if you didn't have the packages we just installed and that next config set up, you'd get an error here. But as you see, there's no error. Let's go ahead and add some content. Now, inside of this file, we can use markdown syntax. So I can give it an h1 tag and say about, and we see that's coming through. And if I inspect, you see we're getting an h1 tag. All right, so I just went ahead and added some more content. Let's take a look at this. So it's coming through. Now you can also add components inside of here. So for example, if we created a folder called components, let's create a button component. So we can just say export default function, we'll call this button. So just a basic React component. We can return just a simple button. We'll give it text of click me. And how we use this is inside of any markdown file or MDX file, just like you would in a JavaScript file, we can just say import button from components slash button.js. And then we can use it just as you would in any JavaScript file. So let's see, it can't find it, probably spelled something wrong, right? Because remember we have to go back one directory Okay, there we go. And this button works. And just to show you that, we can give it an on click and let's just send an alert. All right, let's go test it out. There we go. So you can see that your components come through nicely. So you can go ahead and add all the content, all the components you want. The final thing I'm gonna show you is how you can actually style all of this. So you can't add styles in Markdown. But what we can do is we can add a component that will map each Markdown element to its tag, and then we can style that. Go ahead and create a new file in components called MDX components. And that should have the extension.js. Now in here, we're gonna say const MDX components, and then we're gonna export this. And essentially what we're gonna do in here is like I said, we're gonna map the markdown element to its HTML uh, counterpart. And we can add styles to that HTML tag. So for example, this will map to a P tag. So we can say P colon, pass in the props, arrow notation, and we want this to return a P tag just like that. And then what we can do is first let's pass in our props. Then we can add any styling we want. So let me go ahead and say style and give it a font 
size of 30 pixels. Now nothing is coming through yet, so to have this take effect, we need to open up underscore app.js, import those styles, and then we can also import MDX provider. And this is from MDXJS React. And then we can wrap the provider around our page props. And then this takes in a property MDX components. We'll set that equal to our MDX components. And we need to wrap this with braces like that. And this provider here should be components. There we go, that's looking good. Okay, so got our styles here. And if we go back, now you can see it is the P tags are 30 pixels. I can make this 25 and it gets a bit smaller. Let's go ahead and style one more. What if I had some inline code? And let's say this property was 10 lines long. We don't want to throw that into here because that would take a lot of space. So what we can do is we can map this to custom code. And then above here, we can say const custom code equals, pass in the props, use some error notation, and then we can return whatever we want. So again, we're gonna return a code tag, pass in those props, and then we can give it whatever style we want. So for example, we'll give it a background color of light blue. And if we check that out, there it is. It's coming through right there. So that's how you can use custom properties. And that's it, guys. So as you can see, we were able to use Markdown pages. And inside of there, we can add custom components and map and use whatever styles we want. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.